Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Movie Burger's Secret Recipes. In this series, the goal is to take a step back and look at movies as the cultural artifacts that they are, expressing the various styles and values that continue to influence how we view the medium as a whole. Just like how we've seen trends come and go in terms of what kinds of movies are made, there have also been a variety of evolving ideas about exactly what movies are, how they work, and what they're capable of. These kinds of meditations belong to what's called film theory, though you can think of it more like film philosophy, only without the same amount of political perversion. In this episode, we'll be talking about director Alfonso Cuaron's Academy Award-winning film Gravity, which has captivated audiences and critics alike with its thrilling intensity and potent realism. That the movie is so thrilling is in this case of course directly due to the ways in which it manages to construct that heart-racing sense of realism. However, credit for this should go to more than just the spectacular special effects. Just as important to the creation of such a convincing sense of reality is the manner with which Quoron establishes the relationship between the film and its audience. Here is what I mean by that. One of the first brilliant theorists about movies was the formative Hugo Munsterberg, who in having the rawest fascination with the ability to tell narratives through moving images, claimed that movies do not exist on silver screens, but in our minds. To him, every experience is a relation between the part and the whole, between figure and ground. It is the mind which has the ability to resolve this relation and organize its perceptual field. In other words, in order for the things we see to create the illusion of movement and space, our minds have to play along. But more importantly, our minds comprehend the relationships between the things we see depending on how we pay attention to them. This means that we actively participate in how we process what we're seeing, which in turn means that we help shape a film's narrative as we watch it unfold. This is where style comes into play. Although we participate in the formation of our perceptions, each movie strongly influences what ways and to what degree we do so. This is to say that how a director visually tells a story greatly affects how we perceive it. To better understand this give and take, let us take a close look at Gravity's opening sequence. Cuaron provides the key components of our realistic feeling perception from the very first frame. The Earth, in all its majesty, fills up most of the screen, with the cold blackness of space looming behind it. The white speck of our hero's distant spacecraft is at first almost invisibly faint, but soon we discover our humbly sized protagonists in a calculated juxtaposition, caught between the beautiful yet imposing stature of our home world and the oblivion of the infinite beyond. Immediately, we are reminded of the utter seclusion that space provides merely by its nature. Slowly but surely, the once diminutive shuttle grows ever larger in our field of view, and the space that once felt so empty becomes filled with the life, personality, and presence of our story's main interests. Though perhaps deceptively subtle, the initial depiction of the tiny shuttle, situated between the Earth and the rest of space, forms the basis of the sense of reality that the film quickly finishes establishing and henceforth relies on. By juxtaposing these elements in this way, the movie effectively defines its physical setting as the staggering and humbling place we know it to be. And it is from this critical foundation that the movie is able to continue illustrating other nuances that articulate its representation of reality, making it feel all the more expressive of the facts strategically outlined before the title card. Right away, our minds have enough information to work with so that they're able to incorporate other variables that will eventually emerge and harmonize to form an impressively authentic and tangible sense of realism. Here's where things get really interesting. While in close-up with our characters, our perspective of the relation between them, the Earth, and space is maintained by a switch from a visual emphasis to an aural one. With the screen filled with the faces and actions of our characters, and only the manner of their restrained movements and the camera's fluid meandering to visually link them to their modest relationship with Earth and space, it is the fact that we hear only what they hear that allows us to maintain our original perspective, if only subconsciously. We have been trained by countless other films that do unrealistic things like convey sound in space to ignore the vital components that construct gravity's realism once our view of them shifts from this to this. So once we first zoom in to see who it is the next 80 minutes of the movie are going to be about, our minds are at least half expecting to recognize sound effects we'd imagine hearing if the story were told where there is air for sound to travel. But by insisting on adhering to the reality of space's nature, we never let go of that establishing perspective. And because of this, we allow that perspective to build on itself with other cues. One such obliging cue is the shot of the film's central character, Ryan Stone, when immediately following the shuttle disaster, we see her speedily somersaulting into the void. With this shot, 
a visual emphasis reasserts itself and from then on works in tandem with the aural one to maintain the mental perspective established by the film's opening shots. And for the cherry on top, the Aquaron makes this whole first scene one long take further emphasizes that sense of reality by allowing us to experience it in real time. And as a way to further augment the impression of reality set up by the film's opening shots, the camera's complete freedom to follow what it wants from any angle helps to orient us to the reality that in space, there is no objective orientation. There is no up or down, and so objects are capable of moving in any which way, in any direction. And because the camera establishes this fact before the crisis that kickstarts the rest of the movie, viewers are at least afforded the opportunity to be fully equipped to tumble with our main protagonist without their sense of reality being compromised. And by having the camera go back and forth between being static and mobile, Quaron affords himself the liberty of emphasizing the character's movements however necessary to play up the drama, again without sacrificing realism. Altogether, the film's tremendous success with conveying its reality as an extension of our own is no doubt the reason why it has resonated so strongly with so many audiences. Indeed, it's rare to have such a visceral experience outside of a horror movie. And even though scientific nitpickers like Neil deGrasse Tyson have taken umbrage with certain details, history will likely consider gravity to be a momentous example of film's ability to bridge the gap between us and it. And a huge reason for that is the visual style employed by the film's now Oscar-winning director. Alright, that'll be all for this video. Thanks so much to all of you for watching. If you'd like to see more, subscribe to the Movie Burgers channel. And if you're already a subscriber, please consider showing your support through the Movie Burgers Patreon page at this link. Until next time, take care.